Hi there and welcome to jeffmobile.com video tutorials for technology tips. Today I'm going to show you some good export settings to use for Adobe Premiere to export to YouTube. Sometimes you have a really long video or a video that has a lot of effects like color correction on it and you don't have a lot of time. There is a way you can change the settings to export that video really really fast without losing a lot of quality. Other times you want to preserve all the quality your video has and export a really high quality video and you have all night to run your export. So there's also settings you can use to optimize for that. The first thing you want to do in your timeline here, you want to make sure that the work area covers the entire video that you want to export. So you can adjust the work area by dragging these arrows around here. In this demo, I'm using Adobe Premiere CS 5.5, but these tips will also work for newer versions of Premiere, such as Creative Cloud or CS 6. You want to make sure that your timeline is selected and then go to the File menu, go to Export and choose Media. This will open the Export dialog. This region here shows the area that will be exported and you can drag through to see a preview of your video. This is a cooking video I created recently on green beans. If your source range does not match the range you want to export, you can drag the endpoints here to change the region that will be exported, or you can change the source range property here to the entire sequence or with the work area or custom. Under export settings, for exporting to YouTube or to sharing with clients, I always use H.264 in the format. It's a really good format for exporting for the web. And it's a pretty good format for exporting in general. For preset, I would you can you can start with any of these, but I usually create my own preset. I've create one here called uh, Vlog HX9V, but I pretty much use a custom preset all the time. For comments, you can type a comment if you want. It's not really required. For output name, this should be the name of the file that you want to export. If you click there, you can change the name of your file. You can also choose the directory that you'll be exporting to. If you're exporting a video that has sound, you want to make sure the export video and export audio are checked. Under summary, this gives you an, a, a quick summary of all the settings that will be used for your export. Under output, it shows me the file name, it shows me the format of the video, the resolution, that's how many pixels wide and high, the frame rate, which is 29.97 frames per second, progressive, which is commonly used for web or TV. The other alternative would be interlaced, but generally people are using progressive nowadays. AAC indicates the type of audio encoding, which means it's a AAC refers to a compressed lossy audio format, which is pretty efficient for YouTube. I haven't noticed much quality difference for using AAC regarding other formats. This 192 kilobits is referring to the compression of the audio. I would say the minimum you should use is 192 kilobits for AAC. 48 kilohertz, that refers to the frequency of the audio, which in this case is the same as the video itself, which is 48 hertz, 48,000 hertz. Same thing as 48 kilohertz. And of course, stereo. Most people are exporting video in stereo nowadays. You may be exporting a mix for a DVD, which maybe have a multi-channel mix, but usually it's stereo. The final line here refers to the codec for the video. VBR means variable bit rate, which is very common nowadays. You want to be using a variable bit rate if you want to save space on your files. It's a more efficient use of the processor and the computer. And it shows that it's a one pass encoding, which means it will only go through the video once when it's encoding it. I haven't noticed much difference with two pass in terms of the quality. It just takes twice as long. For target, that is the, the bit rate of your video encoding. 30.000 is, is a mega, megabits per second. A higher number means you'll have a larger file, but also better quality. I haven't noticed much quality difference above 25 or 30, at least for YouTube. So for a really high quality video, I'd set it at 30. The max is, of course, the maximum quality it will go up to, so I set this around 50. So all these settings here are controlled by the tabs here, video and audio. So if you notice, if you change this one here to 720, which maybe you want to do that if you are if you want to export a lower resolution video, you'll notice up in the output here that now changed to 720. This link just links the aspect ratio so that if you change the height, it will also change the width at the same time. TV standard NTSC or PAL, if you're in 
U Europe or Asia, you want to be using PAL. If you're in USA or Japan, you want to use NTSC. For frame rate, this is a depending on the, on the style of video of camera that you've been shooting in and also the source timeline. My source timeline is 29.97 FPS. I also want to choose 29.97 in my output. If you're making, if you're designing a film for the cinema, you may want to shoot at a different frame rate, say a 23.976 in North America. If you're in Asia or in Europe, you may want to be using 25. Depends on your region, but generally use the same setting as your camera so you won't lose any quality. Aspect ratio. If you're looking to make a video for a TV, a standard TV or YouTube, I'd use widescreen. If you're looking for an old format TV, use 4x3. Profile, I choose main. I don't really know what that is. Level, I choose 4.2. That's okay. Uh, you can choose a higher one or lower one if you want. Now, this is where you get into the other settings for the quality. If you want a slower rendering, but you want the highest quality video, I'd choose render at maximum depth. But if you want a lower quality video, but render a lot faster, uncheck that right now. For bitrate encoding, I usually choose variable bitrate and one pass. You can choose two pass if you want higher quality, but I notice it takes twice as long and it doesn't seem to give me any noticeable difference. The only reason you choose CBR for constant bitrate is if you're encoding for a really slow computer that has problems pay playing back your video, it will ensure that it plays smoothly without any hit glitches. I only really noticed this on really slow computers. For target bitrate, again, the higher number you have here, the larger the file size it will be. And if you have a lower resolution, you won't need such a high bit rate f to make up the same quality. So I would say for most videos, you'll be fine around 30, unless you're exporting a really super long video or you have a slow network connection. You may want to set it at maybe eight or five or three even, but you'll notice a dramatic decrease in quality when you start decreasing this number. Maximum, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it up around 50 and it should be fine on most computers. However, if you have a computer that plays back the video slowly, you may, and not, with not very much power, you may want to reduce that to, to about the same as your target, but it's really up to you. You can play around with the different formats. I don't really touch the advanced settings. And finally, these ones down here, they're very important. If you want to make your video render faster, you can uncheck use maximum render quality. But if you have more time and you want to make sure your video is super quality, check use, use maximum render quality. And for use previews, if you want to speed up your rendering, but it may affect the quality, you can choose use previews and it will be a faster render. And of course, use frame blending. I generally don't use this unless something's wrong with my video. If you are using the same frame rate as your source, as your output, there's no reason to use flame, frame blending. But if say you want to use a slow motion video or we're using f f frame blending, you may want to check that. But generally, I don't keep it checked because it does slow things down. As you can see, there's a little tip here. It says, create smoother motion by blending adjacent, adjacent frames when input frame rate doesn't match the output frame rate. Okay, so we've gone to the audio tab. For YouTube, I generally use AAC, stereo, 48 kilohertz, high quality, and 192 kilobits. However, if you're exporting for archival purposes, you may want to change this, but this is what I normally use. And so a final summary, if you want to export a video that's a really long video, you want to reduce the file size, you can ch reduce the target bit rate to say like eight or, eight or 10, it'll be a smaller file size. If you want to export a video that is a better quality and you have lots of time, I for the maximum quality video, I choose check on render at maximum depth, check on use maximum render quality, and you can uncheck use previews. And you can keep this at one pass. I haven't noticed much difference. If you want to video make a video that it's pretty good quality, but it's very fast at rendering, so you have a lot of color correction, you have a lot of a lot of video to render uncheck render at maximum depth, uncheck use maximum render quality, and make sure to check use previews. And that will give you the fastest render time for exporting your video. If you want to get your video online really fast, I would do those things. Uncheck this, uncheck this, and do check use previews for your max, your fastest video export. Make sure, this, make sure this is at one pass. So that gives you a few settings to think about. 
For now, I'm going to show you what happens when I render at maximum depth, I'll use maximum render quality, uncheck use previews, and set bit rate encoding at one, pa one pass. When I'm ready to go, I can check Q. This will export. It'll open up Adobe Media Encoder in just a moment. And then when you're ready to go, just click this plus button here to start Q. It will render your video and it will give you an estimated amount of time it will take to do this. So if you have any questions about rendering your videos and you want to achieve a certain thing with your video, I recommend just leaving a comment below this video and with your question, I'll be happy to re reply with my comments or answers to your questions. Also, if you like this video, please click the subscribe button below. I'll be happy to respond back and uh, provide more interesting tutorials in the future. Thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoy sharing your videos with the world and also that this video gives you some tips on how to render videos with higher quality or faster so you can get your videos online in a faster way. Thanks again for watching my video. My vi name's Jeff from Jeff Peters, Jeff, jeffmobile.com, and I'll definitely talk to you again soon. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye for now.